So our next presenter is Allison Loyola from Idaho State University. When you leave tonight, the only thing you will remember is that your brain is like a garden. It is the home to several unique cells. We will focus on two, microglia and neurons. Both of these are particularly important in the development of the brain. Let's imagine the microglia as the gardener and the neurons like the plants. In a healthy brain, the gardener does an extraordinary job during development burning the neurons allowing proper signals throughout the brain to carry its functions correctly. What would happen if the gardener becomes dysfunctional? The plants become bushy and unhealthy. In the brain, we call this hyperconnectivity. Did you know that hyperconnectivity is one of the hallmarks of autism? One in 44 kids in the US is affected by this condition, and there is no cure yet, despite such a high incidence. So, what would make microglia dysfunctional? One possibility is drugs. Vaporic acid, or VPA, is a widely used drug to treat epilepsy, but taking during pregnancy can lead to an increased risk of autism in children exposed to it in prenatal life. In my thesis, I am working with some celebrities. They are mouse models. These little animals assist us in studying the impact of VPA on microglia. <laughs> the brain on microglia. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, in these pictures, we can see on the on picture C, we color dotted. We color-coded the brain microglia with the green dye and the nucleus with the red dye and photographed them under a very special laser microscope. In picture C, you can see in the lucky mice that did not get VPA, we see healthy microglia with the green and the merge of the green and the red. In picture D, in the not so lucky mice that got VPA, we do not see microglia. When we quantify it, we see a dramatic reduction of microglia in the bottom panel. This is exciting because this is the first clue that tells us the drug is reducing the microglia number, making them dysfunctional at crucial developmental time points. We have a long way to go to decode this medical mystery, but we're enthusiastic that our findings will have pathological implications and may lead to the discovery of new drugs to treat autism. But as they say, one step at a time. Thank you. I was thinking the whole time, how do you explain this in three minutes? But um, a very complex subject. But um, what um, what what made you, what is your major for starters? Uh, pharmaceutical sciences. Okay. Okay. And did you have a special interest in autism? Yes. So I actually have a couple cousins that. Um, are diagnosed with autism and then when I um, met my professor and she was interested in doing this research I didn't hesitate and I didn't doubt it I just wanted to learn more and research and find um, therapy and a solution to give um, my cousins or kids like them a better quality of life well, we wish you lots of luck. Thank you. And good Thank luck. You. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Allison, now thank you for your presentation.